Hello, Anu. It's really nice to have you here. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. How are you? I'm great. Uh, so, like, uh, you can start off with like uh, giving an intro about you. Okay, so I'm currently pursuing. I'm in my final year, and I'm pursuing computer science and engineering from Indira Gandhi Delhi Technical University. And I have done a software engineering internship at Google in summer 2023. And before that, I completed a software engineering internship at Twitter. And apart from that, I enjoy problem solving. And I've also been a teaching assistant at Scalar Academy. And my hobbies include playing badminton. So that's a little about me. That was really great to hear. And like... I'm quite surprised, like uh, how many offers you had during your uh, uh, intern season. Like uh, I can literally read the names of those companies and uh, like Google, Dijon, LinkedIn, uh, Intuit, like uh, such uh, good companies, and you got offers in all of them. Like I can't even imagine getting the offers in such companies in my whole lifetime. <laughs> it's really great to see that, and uh, like I really want to know, like what uh, was your motivation, and uh, like what really led you to ha uh, like crack such companies. I just really wanted to like pursue a good internship at a company, so I was like, I really was just participating in a lot of programs, a lot of hackathons. So most of the opportunities that I got, they were all like all of the offers were off campus only. So I think I just really wanted to intern at a good company and I figured that if I give many interviews and I interview with different companies, then only like I'll get to know about the company and their culture. So that was like the sole motivation behind why I wanted to get multiple internship offers. So like at the end, I could make a sound decision about where I want to continue with. So that was like the main reason why I was like interviewing with many companies even after I got offers. So oh, that's really nice, you know. Uh, so, uh, like, can you tell um tell me like uh what was your like uh how was your, how did you start doing it like uh what was uh, how did you kick start your journey of coding and uh, what all did you try during your journey? So I started like and earlier I had no experience in coding. So in my my eleven twelfth also I had physical education as an well, additional subject. So I did not know anything about coding. So when I joined college, like there were a lot of webinars and sessions being held. So I think the first language that I started with was Python. And in Python, I just wrote like some simple programs and all. But then I really, I left queer coding and because I just joined a lot of clubs and society. So I got lost in all of that. But then later on, around my second semester, I realized that if I want to get like a good internship, I will have to do DSA. So then I started doing DSA with Java and I really did not pursue any coding course. I just took like, I just saw YouTube videos and apart from that, like I, everything that I've learned, I have learned from YouTube only and all from the free resources out there. And so after my second seminar, the first opportunity that I got was Google Women Engineers Scholarship. And this was like a two year program. So in this two-year program, they used to have teaching classes and modules. So I followed along with this program. And I think this program, along with DE Shaw's Ascend Educate program, because of these two programs, they had like a lot of sessions and a lot of teaching classes. So I learned most of my DSC from these programs only and from the YouTube tutorials that are out there. So I did not pursue like any coding course or anything. And I believe like there are some really nice lectures from MIT Open Courseware and even like Harvard's course is there, like CS50. I don't remember the exact course, but they are all out on YouTube and they have some really nice explanations. So that is how like I started. So, like uh, it's really awesome, uh, you know, not doing any courses and uh, like gaining so much knowledge from uh, like uh, YouTube itself. Like I, I can recall like uh, most of the people, uh, um, uh, be, me be, being me also, uh, like uh, have done a lot of courses, uh, have 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 been through a lot of different, uh, you know, websites and all uh, to grab knowledge. It's really nice that uh, you uh, like used up the U YouTube resources only. Uh, like uh, you said, uh, can you specify some more resources uh, like uh, where the other people can also like uh, learn uh, learn the stuff. 
So I would say that some of the channels such as Aditya Verma's DP playlist and then Striver's YouTube channel. So these are producing really quality content. So these two channels and I would say MIT Open Courseware. So even though their lectures are like one hour long, but still they provide you in-depth just explanation. And the professors that are there in MIT, they, they, they do a really good job of explaining the concept. And apart from that, I would say that there are many blogs on code courses as well. And people have like really detailed, written those blogs in a detailed manner. And they have also given practice questions along with those blogs. So I would say that code courses blogs, and I would say that uh, YouTube channels such as Scriber, Aditya Verma, and MIT Open Courseware, and Harvard CS50. So I would say these are like the main four channels that I primarily follow. And these are like really, they do a really good job of explaining problems, discussing the patterns and all, and also discussing like the concepts. In them. So, yeah, these are all the resources that I majorly follow. Great, great, great. Uh, so, can you tell, uh, tell us that uh, how important is uh, CP as compared to development, or uh, is development really uh, outstands uh, CP when it comes to off campus? Uh, like, so I would say, like, in off-campus placements, like it's really important that you are doing good in CP and CSA. So it just really just matters what your end goal is. So if you are like doing open source and all, then there will be different companies that want to hire you. And if you're doing CP and CSA, then there are different set of companies that want to hire you. So if you are doing dev, then you have to be really good in dev and not just like building projects, you just have to also contribute in open source. So there are many like remote international companies that do look at open source contributions as well. But if I'm considering the scene, like the hiring scene in India particularly, so if you want to get into good product-based companies, I would say that doing CP is really important because there is a lot of competition out there, especially in off-campus placement. So if you are good in CP, if you're good in problem solving, then you'll be easily able to clear the online assessment like this. So, like doing CP and that, not just that, it will also help you in improving your thinking skills and your problem solving skills. So, it just goes a long way. So, that being said, you should not like neglect development totally. You should do development as well. Like, you have to show some projects that you have built in your resume. So, that being said, you have to do a little bit of development. But I would say, like, if you're targeting the product based companies in India, then you should be doing CP a lot. Oh, that's a really great insight. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it. Uh, uh, now the next question is, uh, like, uh, do you, uh, how to work on your interview skills and uh, how to prepare yourself better for it? Okay. So in your interview skills, I would say there are like your interview skills can be divided into two parts. So one is your personal skills, communication skills, and the second is the technical skills. So for your technical skills, you really just have to prepare according to what the interview is about. So if the interview is about DSA, then you should be thorough with that. And if the interview is about your core subjects, so I would say that you have to prepare very well for your core subjects as well. And the second part is the communication skills. So in any interview, it's really important that you interact well with the interviewer and you are able to communicate your thoughts. So even if you are like a pro in your technical skills, if you do not have the right communication skills, then you will most likely not pass the interview. So I would say to work on your communication skills, it's really important that you like, either you have mock interviews and you read certain books as well to improve your vocabulary. And I would say that it's really just important that you interact more with people to improve your communication skills. And as for the technical skills, again, you have to, like, it will be interview specific. So if it is core subjects, then you should be thorough with your core subjects as well. I know that many people don't like doing core subjects, but that is something that you have to do. And so, yeah, so to improve your interview skills, I would say that you need to, like, focus on these two parts majorly, on your personal skills and on your technical skills. Thank you. And it would be very useful for the listeners, you know, uh, like uh, hearing these things and like, uh, yeah, the, uh, this other uh, stuff can really help you like uh, improve your interview skills. Right. So uh, like 
uh, one more question is that uh, how can a person improve their LinkedIn profile so as to uh, attract off campus recruiters? Okay, so to like improve your LinkedIn profile, what you'll have to do is you fill out all the sections that are there in the LinkedIn profile. So basically, don't leave any section incomplete. I see many people who have just written their college name and they have not included anything like their project and either their achievements or their experience at all. So fill out every section of your LinkedIn profile. And apart from that, I would say that the second thing that is really important to get off campus, like opportunities through LinkedIn is personal branding. So personal branding is all about like putting yourself out there. If you have any achievements, then go ahead and post about it. So if you go and post about it, then people will see you, see you, see your profile, see your achievement, and then only they'll reach out to you. So even if you are like achieving a lot, if you're not sharing it out there with the world, then many people will not come to know about. So I would say, so fill out your LinkedIn profile completely and then reach out to people from the company that you want to work at. So send them a connection request and then introduce yourself to the recruiters or the ask them about some openings because sometimes there are many job openings that are internal to the employee. So even though it may not be visible on the career page, it's still visible to the employee. So you should go ahead and ask the employees working at the companies as well, like if there are any relevant openings. And the second thing that you should be doing is, again, your personal branding. So you should regularly be posting about your achievement. Even if you have built any project, you should just give like a small demo of it on LinkedIn. So as for me as well, like I was from my second year onwards, anything that I was achieving, I was continuously posting on LinkedIn. So because of that, like I was able to get calls from international companies as well. And personal branding played a very important role in that. Wow. Like it seems uh, also like, it seems a uh, pretty good, you know. You are getting interview calls from international companies and all. Like, yeah, and it's personal. all because of personal branding. Yeah, I can see that. Nice. <laughs> uh, so, one more question, I guess. Uh, yeah. So, uh, someone asked that uh, what is the current uh, hiring scene for ST? Uh, because uh, many companies are talk uh, like, uh, there, there was a news about recession and all, like, uh, companies are not hiring. So, what is the current scene for? Uh, hiring industry. So I would say that hiring is still happening. Like it may not be as much as it was in previous years. So I would say that for any person like who is like looking for a full time job in this scenario, you should not just be fixated on joining the you know the so called fan companies, and you should be like broadening your search. I would say that there are companies, some startup companies. Like recently, I heard there were uh, Stripe, and there were many other companies which are like hiring for new grads and they are not as well known. So people think that, you know, people just look at the career page of some well-known companies like Google, Microsoft, and they feel like they are like these companies are not hiring anymore. But that is not true. There are many other companies that are still hiring. So I would say that everybody should just focus on a lot of other companies as well. So there are some startups which also pay very well and they are hiring too. So instead of focusing on the companies that are famous, just widen your job search and look out for companies that are also hiring in this scenario. So that is like my uh, opinion right now that even though with the recession and all the opportunities are less, but there are not like, it's not like it's totally gone. There are still companies that are hiring. You just have to like broaden your search and be active on LinkedIn. And you can like on LinkedIn as well, you can set job alerts. So according to your experience level and all, if there is any company that has an opening, you will get a job alert. So yeah, that is the current hiring scenario. Just don't focus on the famous companies. They focus on a lot of other companies as well. Great. Uh, so can you give us a roadmap for a, for some beginner who, who just start, wants to start uh, his journey in coding and or has wants to go for ST road? Okay, so... Uh, start, uh, for this roadmap, what I would say is that first you need to choose a language and like in which language you will primarily be coding. So it's either like mostly people prefer C++, Java or Python. So once you select those uh, languages, what you can do is you can start with doing the basic understanding the language, like understanding the syntax and how the language works. 
and from that what you can do is you can go ahead and start learning the concept so in dsa you can start learning what are arrays what are linked lists and every time you learn a concept what i would suggest is that simultaneously you go ahead and also solve the questions of it because if you just gain theoretical knowledge it won't really help unless and until you also like do practice questions as well so learn any concept and then from that you can also start learning like practicing the questions so in this way you will also be learning the concept and you will also be doing the questions as well and i would say that if you want to start with cp then start giving the contest like don't worry about the kind of rank that you are getting or the number of questions that you are able to solve uh, just giving concepts uh, just giving these contests will also help you and once you give those contests if you are not able to solve any questions go ahead and upsolve those questions and understand the concept behind the questions that you were not able to solve so in this way what will happen is like you are doing your own dsa journey uh, preparation as well and apart from that you all you are also able to learn all the new concepts from the contest that you gave so this will like help you in both the ways in learning concepts and or uh, if you are giving contests then obviously gradually your performance will increase so you will also like end up getting a good rating on these platforms and the second thing i would say is like you should be focusing on little bit on development as well so you need to have like at least two to three projects on your resume and for that i would say that primarily like web development is the best for beginners so you can start learning html css javascript and then for back end you can learn like any one back end language and you think that you can build like a pretty good solid full stack website and then you can include that in your resume as well and then the third important thing that to focus on for beginners would be again your core subjects so these are operating systems computer networks and dbms so if you are able to focus on these three parameters which is your dsa your development and your core subjects then you will be prepared for an sce role and then uh, through this development you will also be having some projects on your resume and as you were continuously giving contests as well you will end up with some ranks as well which you can add on to your resume so you will have a well built resume and using this you can apply to like the top product based companies and you can like try off campus for sd roles thank thanks a lot anu for sharing all this knowledge uh, you really have helped a lot uh, to the listeners so yeah thank you like it was really nice having you here it was thank a really you, great it was really nice talking to you thank you